In the name of the USCCB Committee of International Justice and Peace, uh, it's my pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to our gathering and hope that it's very beneficial for all who are involved. After the meeting at which I was elected chairman of the USCCB's Committee on International Justice and Peace, I encountered Cardinal Dolan, president of the USCCB, in the corridor. With an affirming grab of my shoulder and the heartiest of congratulations, he cut to the chase. You know, Dick, we have to emphasize international religious freedom in concert with domestic religious freedom. Let's do it. The encounter was one, the cue that pushed to center stage what had been an ongoing high priority for the International Justice and Peace Committee. The committee has long monitored religious liberty issues and has strongly protested over the years to the U.S. government as well as other pertinent entities when this, the first and most significant of human rights, was undermined in various countries. The committee's voice was magnified because in 1998, the United States enacted legislation that established the Office of International Religious Freedom at the State Department and the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, putting on record the country's commitment to promote this freedom, which has no boundaries. In concert with the Catholic teaching, the USCCB advocacy of this right embraces the defense of the freedom of all persons and their religious traditions. The Bishops' Conference has enjoyed partners in its international liberty, relig religious liberty work Today, I thank two of these partners. First, Catholic Relief Service, Services, who are present here in the persons of Bishop Gerald Kakanis and Dr. Carolyn Wu. And secondly, the Catholic University of America and President John Garvey for being co-sponsors with the committee in this conference. Heartfelt gratitude is extended to both organizations. They recognize the importance of the topic. Proper light needs to be shed because, in the balance, hangs the derivatives of peace, development, human dignity, and fundamental justice. Moreover, the tragic events of today in Libya, of, I understand, it was announced for being killed, including the U.S. ambassador, ostensibly on religious motivation, accents the timeliness of our gathering here. I'm also ever so grateful to my brother American bishops who join us in support of this undertaking. After a week of solidarity meetings with the bishops of Cote d'Ivoire last year, the Secretary General of that country's bishops conference said in farewell, now I truly know what it means when we say the church is Catholic and one. My brothers, your presence today is testimony of that unity we are privileged to share on a global scale. I welcome also in a very special way representatives from the U.S. State Department. We are grateful for the solid working relationship we have with this cabinet de uh, department and its representatives both here in Washington and in their embassies throughout the world. In addition, I want to welcome in a very special way once again Archbishop Carlo Marie Vigano, the Apostolic Nuncio here in the United States. Archbishop John Nanayakin of Abuja, Nigeria. Archbishop Francis A. Chilicot, Permanent Observer of the Holy See to the United Nations in New York. And Archbishop Silvano Tomasi, Permanent Observer of the Holy See to the United Nations in Geneva. Your contributions certainly lend international scope and credibility to our deliberations. We're very grateful for your joining us. Since you are the one who sowed the seed of this, for this conference, Cardinal Dolan, it is appropriate that you present the opening address. Cardinal Dolan traces his roots to St. Louis. He obtained his doctorate here at the Catholic University of America. His thesis was on a distingu distinguished American church leader and innovator, Archbishop John O'Hara. Edwin, excuse me. Uh, thank you for historically correcting that. His eminence has served as the Secretary of the Apostolic Nunciature, Rector of the North American College, Auxiliary Bishop of St. Louis, and Archbishop of Milwaukee. 
He recently survived his role of offering the concluding prayer at both the Republican and Democratic <laughs> National Conventions. Pope John Paul II referred to New York City as the capital of the world. Thus, the individual who serves as that city's Archbishop, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, is a natural to lead us as we begin deliberations on international religious freedom, an imperative for the common good. Benvenuta su eminenza. Thank you.